Alex Kaplan is Senior Vice President and Head of Global Partnerships North America for Swiss Reinsurance Company, and Lionel Johnson Jr. is the Mayor of the City of St. Gabriel, Louisiana. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you just attended a very interesting meeting between the insurance industry and mayors from along the Mississippi <laughs> River corridor. <laughs> Let me get your general reaction to how the meeting went. Let me start with you, if I could, Alex. Sure. It was a, it was a very collaborative discussion of highly engaged uh, officials along the Mississippi River Basin. Uh, I was really inspired by some of the work that they're doing. You know, uh, us in the risk business, we're constantly analyzing the exposures and we're always hoping that individuals, communities, governments are thinking about their exposure. And generally, it's, it's never where we want it to be, but I was actually quite inspired by the conversation today. The mayors were on point, uh, knowing what they're exposed to and are developing plans to address it. And Mayor Johnson, if in addition to getting your initial reaction to the meeting, you're also co-chair of the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative. Yes. So if you could tell us a bit about that project as well. Sure. Uh, well, I am Lionel Johnson, Jr., mayor of the city of St. Gabriel, Louisiana, as well as co-chair of the Mississippi River City Towns Initiative. Um, we are here today. Uh, we're, we're thankful for the meeting with the insurance uh, industry. Uh, I thought the meeting was very productive. Uh, gave us an opportunity to uh, have all parties give their uh, perspectives on how things work during times of disaster. Um, we understand that we are at certain risks and uh, we cannot uh, uh, facilitate those risks without insurance. And it gives us an opportunity to have a an op uh, conversation with the insurance industry to help us better facilitate certain things with our constituents. Uh, the Mississippi River Cities Towns Initiative spans from Mississippi, um, Minnesota, uh, to the uh, Gulf of Mexico through Louisiana. Uh, it is a conglomerate of mayors uh, who are working together to uh, sustain uh, the resilience and sustainability of the Mississippi River. Uh, we realize that the river is a natural asset that we believe is underappreciated, uh, and we want to ensure that uh, we continue to uh, keep the Mississippi River as a priority because it is a key economic factor in our economy. Uh, Ten states in, is along the, that corridor. Yes. Uh, Alex, let me ask you okay. about the concept of reinsurance, since it's sure. sort of a technical term, and how it relates to risk management. Sure. So reinsurance, simply put, is insurance for insurance companies, right? So when an insurance company uh, sells insurance to small businesses, to individuals, at some point they had an accumulation of risk challenge and they say, okay, that's, that's enough of that particular risk on our balance sheet. They actually go out and they'll buy reinsurance. So uh, think of us as the global aggregators of risk, right? So we are looking at Mississippi River flooding at the same time we're looking at Japanese earthquake and Australian bushfire. And we are managing all of those exposures. So we need to be thinking about all of these risks on a global scale. We also need to be thinking, them, uh, thinking about them in a holistic fashion in, in a forward-looking way, right? So we can't just worry about the next flood. We have to worry about what the world looks like 50 years from now. And unfortunately, uh, risk, uh, these types of risks are a growth industry. They are, and, and it's a, from a variety of factors, right? So we often talk about the increased in severity and, and frequency of these disasters, but at the same time, and what is actually the largest loss driver is the changes of, of exposure, right? The massive accumulation of wealth and assets in the most disaster-prone areas are on the globe, and, and the Mississippi River is, is, uh, is not immune to that. Coastal property always been attractive. Yeah, and, precisely. And, uh, uh, Mayor Johnson, in your bio, it, mm -hmm. it's, it talks about the fact that you were changed by the flood of 26. 16, change your outlook on your job and on this type of risk management. Could you explain to us exactly what that impact was for you? Well, uh, the August floods of 2016, um, we um, thought that we had uh, survived the initial rain, rainfall. Uh, two days later, we woke up to uh, flooding. Um, it was a dramatic experience. Uh, it's a very humbling uh, uh, experience uh, to know that you have a problem and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Um, and so one of the things uh, that experience uh, did for me is it made me more environmentally conscious. Uh, I, I, I have a, um, a corridor of, of, of um, agriculture as well as chemical. And so uh, both play a major role in my revenue, but they are both assisted by the Mississippi River. And so I'm at a point now where I have to think about how I don't affect the revenue, but also affect the sustainability of the Mississippi River. Um, right now, we have incurred uh, disaster after disaster after disaster. So the thinking now is, what do we need to do now pre-disaster? Rather than being reactive, how can we be more proactive? 
I'm wondering how, in both of your cases, in, in a world of rapid change and necessary adaptation, how far along the track, down the tracks, are you to doing the things that need to be done to adjust to the new environment? Or how much do you feel like it's a bit of a scramble in playing catch up? I, th I mean, my, my perspective is I think we all know, generally speaking, what, what needs to be done, right? We all have, everyone has great ideas that they, they bring to the table. The challenge is how do you put them together in the construct of, of how our society is established, right? You've got the role of the federal government, local communities, the states, how the states interplay with one another. Of course, you've got the insurance industry, uh, adaptation professionals, and how does that? How does this all come together in some sort of a cohesive plan? And putting that together is actually harder than coming up with the initial sure. plan in the first place. Well, that's that's what I'm wondering about. What do, what do you feel the gap is between what you know needs to be done and what's yeah. actually happening? So I often talk about the two biggest challenges, uh, and I and I raised this in the room earlier today, uh, is risk perception and risk ownership. And risk perception, to me, clearly, um, these mayors get get an A in this in this arena because they understand exactly what they're exposed to. They know what it means to their local economy and to their citizens. Risk ownership um, is a bit of a different challenge, right? Who actually bears the risk, right? Whose responsibility is it when the bad thing occurs? And too often, I feel like we have a federal government and state governments and local officials that are often pointing the finger at one another. And as a result, if the assumption is that someone else is going to take care of the problem, then why should I do anything to reduce mm -hmm. the exposure? That, in that ownership equation, how engaged are your constituents in addressing this issue? Well, I'm fortunate that they are actively engaged because it's personal for them now. Um, in terms of uh, our, our talkings today, I think you have the right parties at the table. You've got local government, you've got insurance. Now, there are many more parties that need to come to the table, but as long as I think uh, we can get on one accord, we can fill in the gap with those other entities that need to be involved in this conversation. Um, I looked at three things dur during this meeting. Practicality, uh, of course, profitability, and of course, pal palatability. Mm -hmm. um, we have to come up with something that's practical. Uh, something that's not overbearing or overburdening. Uh, we, something that has to be palatable for constituents because uh, as we talked about in terms of uh, risk and, and understanding what that risk is, we need insurance. And uh, of course, we can't expect the insurance industry to be a part of this without profitability being uh, a, converse, a piece of the conversation. Is there buy-in from those individual constituents, voters, homeowners, property owners? After experiencing what we experienced in 2016, of August 2016, uh, where we had uh, subdivisions under six feet of water for 20 plus days, mm. uh, where we also had during that time uh, a chemical release, uh, there is buy-in. Mm. Does the insurance act, uh, industry take an active role in suggesting what's a good idea or a bad idea, or do you just help people manage their ideas once they make the choices of where to build, where to live, whatever the case may be? Yeah, I would say it's, a, it's an organic relationship, right? I mean, you, you, we find seat belts in every single car in the United States, and that is because of the insurance industry. The same goes with airbags, smoke detectors in our homes, fire hydrants on every corner, right? Uh, so the insurance industry, I think, plays a role in helping uh, communities or individuals understand what their their risk is. And we can certainly make recommendations, but at the end of the day, right, insurance isn't a silver bullet. It's a part of a larger puzzle. The things that we can bring to the table is sending a pricing signal, right? We quantify the risk and we help people understand exactly what they're exposed to and what will happen to them financially if they don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. The other thing, which I think is much more important from a societal perspective, is it's our job to create an economic floor, right? Mm -hmm. If you have communities that are constantly being being bombarded with these disasters and they're underinsured, you're creating an economic hardship on those individuals, on those communities, and it's so much harder for them to get ahead. And if we can put in proper mechanisms to create an economic floor so that when the bad thing happens, they don't fall deeper and deeper into poverty, and the only direction if, if theoretically is to go up, then we're making a much more resilient community, much more resilient individuals, and a much more resilient country. A final thought for today, gentlemen. Uh, your expectations moving forward. I'm, I'm guessing you didn't approach this meeting as a one-off, but instead of a start of a conversation that could bear additional fruit down the line. What are your hopes moving forward? For me, I would say, yeah, this is the this is the first conversation, and it was it was good that uh, it seemed like all the parties came to the table with a lot of really strong ideas, 
And so now where do we go from here? Uh, what we hope to bring to the table is some of the international experience we have, right? What's happening around the globe? How are, how are other countries dealing with these exact same challenges, right? Flood is not unique to the Mississippi River Basin. Um, and so how are other countries and communities responding to those? And then can we collectively, under the construct of, of this organization, figure out a way to protect these communities collectively, uh, both physically, but socially, as well as financially. Mr. Mayor, you get to pound the gavel, <laughs> final word. Well, two thoughts. Um, um, first thought is um, we have to really protect the Mississippi River. Uh, it is a jewel. Uh, it is key to our, our, our economic uh, sustainability. Uh, we have to have the mayors, we have to have frank conversations with our constituents to help them understand that this is something that we need to ap approach holistically. We can't do it uh, in separate silos. So I have to have a relationship with mayors in, in Minnesota, uh, in Illinois, in Arkansas. And uh, I have to have my con constituents to understand that we are in the midst of uh, what some refuse to believe is climate change. These events are going to happen. And as they are happening, we have to take precaution be before they happen. And there's going to be some cost to it. Um, we were having discussions about if, if you tell me that I have a 26 percent chance of a flood during the lifetime of me being in my house, I'm going to take my chances. But times have changed. We don't believe anymore you can take your chances with that 26 percent. So not great odds. Not great odds at all. So we're just happy that we could have this open discussion with the insurance industry and hoping that from here we can build uh, more conversations to put a, a true assessment together from uh, Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico for the Mississippi River and help us have a better picture of where we go from here. Well, gentlemen, thank you for sharing some insight into your work. This is exciting stuff. Alex Kaplan, Mayor Johnson, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.